Hi everyone, so my name is Marisha. Um, so what we're going to do today, so we're going to have, um, it was called a webinar, but actually we're going to have more kind of workshop style uh, thing. And um, just also for you to be able to um, navigate a bit. So we are going to use Menti a bit, right? But it's not obligatory. I mean, so you can just simply speak up in the chat and so on. I see that some people are joining uh, still. So please, you can follow the link and you can also react. You can answer the questions and so on. So as you see, there are some things. I mean, I also want to see how many people connect. Um, uh, because I was living for a long time in Caucasus, so I learned the way how to <laughs> receive and give feedback. You normally give positive feedback or like even more positive feedback. So you have likes and you have hearts at the at the bottom of the presentation, and then a bit of cat thing. So we're gonna talk about self promotion and visibility today, and then maybe a short disclaimer. And before we start, is that this is not a workshop about how to build your own brand on social media and so on. So we are not going to learn how to write, like uh, create different kind of posts for Instagram or any other type of social media. So um, I think that when I started working with the topic, so what I discovered is that there are, there are lots of myths and stereotypes related to self-promotion and uh, being visible and talking about our own achievements. And today we're gonna focus on working with these stereotypes, getting rid of them and feeling more confident when we talk about ourselves um, in terms of professional, but also personal, um, personal stuff. So maybe just a few facts about me that you have to know. Originally I'm from Belarus, uh, but I don't live there anymore because I, um, since 2020, when the revolution happened and the pandemic, so together in Belarus, I moved to Georgia. So I lived there for four years. And then uh, security service of Georgia and Belarus, they made me leave Georgia as well. So <laughs> now I'm luckily, thanks to them, I'm in Spain. So now I'm in the EU because this is the only safe place where um, I can stay. Um, because I'm quite active in um, in civil society, in Belarusian organizations and also political organizations. But then I'm also a youth worker, so I am a trainer, so I work a lot with young people. I'm also the member of the guild. I'm very happy and proud of that. And then I'm feminist and activist, so of course many things that we'll be talking about are kind of more from the gender perspective and the intersectional approach, which is also about intersection of different types of discrimination. So it's also about race, it's about ethnicity, it's about sexual orientation, gender identity, and many other things. Um, and then also now I'm working for an IT company. So probably you've seen also that I'm working for leadership excellence team. So basically what it means that I'm working with C-suite and I'm working with top management in the organization. So I do different kinds of strategic facilitations, but then also I do lots of programs on um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I also work a lot with different kinds of solutions for women and underrepresented groups in the company. And this is also um, how it happened that we're going to work with some of the materials of um, campaign called I'm Remarkable. Uh, this is the Google campaign. I'll uh, say a few more words about that because we're going to use also some of the data that they collected and also some of the practices. And also a mother of two cats who are asleep. So maybe at some moment they will show up, but let's see. <clears throat> yeah, so basically that's about me. And then I wanted to check also how you're going to participate because this workshop is, um, I would say it's quite emotional. So we're going to discuss things and different kinds of prejudice and so on. And then um, also at some moment, there'll be a practice like exercise where I will ask to share you some things. So I want to know also if you can talk freely um, or if not yet, or if you're only in the listening mode or maybe you start and then you can only listen. So we don't drag you into discussion and don't say, hey, hello, how are you? Do you want to speak up? And then yes, maybe you can also comment and chat. So you can also do things in written. That's possible. Okay, I see two people can talk. <laughs> okay, two people are in listening mode. I don't know who's that, but let's see. Okay, so I also hope that those with the camera, they're of course in this kind of risk zone because I have eye contact with you. So then <laughs> I might address you, please don't freak out. But then yes, sometimes I can be a bit direct like asking some people like straightforward, but 
Yes, it would be good if you pop up also at some moment and you just pick up. Yes, if everybody is silent. Uh, also, I hope uh, Nick and uh, <laughs> Vitaly, if you feel like, <laughs> you can always jump in and interact. Okay, so we have quite many people who can talk. And then uh, some ground rules, right? So um, for this workshop, it's very important to commit and engage, meaning putting other things away. Maybe also like, I mean, you can use your phone still if you are going to work with Mentimeter and so on. So it's absolutely fine just to be here and follow a bit. Uh-huh. Okay. And follow a bit what is happening. And um, then at the moment, probably I'll be sending you to breakout rooms just to um, get to know each other. And um, so then, you know, so that you are not surprised that something is happening. Um we would encourage, I don't know, we didn't know how to call it, but I thought maybe friendly attitude because this is the workshop also about support. And uh, at some moment, maybe we'll even be applauding to each other or doing something, I don't know, supporting in other ways, verbally, non-verbally. So um, I think that's very important. Vegas rule. So <laughs> it's a bit hard to implement it. You know, Vegas rule is like what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but here, of course, as we're recording, it's dry, it's very hard to hide something. Um, but then if you would decide to share some personal stories and then you feel that um, actually want it to be removed from the recording, so you can just ping us and tell us and we can edit the video a bit so it goes online without your story. Yeah, so that's also fine. And then at some moment, we're going to use paper and pen. So maybe you have notebook or maybe you have some pencil or something. It's, it will be important to write also with the hand to use fingers, you know, because it stimulates the brain, you know, and the activity uh, for one of the exercises. So it would be good if you have it. Otherwise, you can also do it on the phone, on the computer, but it's better with the hand. Okay. Um, also, feel free yes, to ask any questions in the chat. So um, the structure of the workshop is very simple. So we're going through introduction and then um, this workshop is evidence-based. So it's based on some data, some research, not very sophisticated, um, but there is lots of background research that was made to design this type of uh, workshops on self-promotion. So I can also share with you different kind of links and uh, data if you want to study more and if you want to, um, to look for it for some some more kind of information and then we're going to make an exercise which is quite simple but very powerful and discuss how was it so that's the plan for today so maybe a few words about the background of the workshop uh, because we're going to use some of the materials of i'm remarkable google initiative uh why um there was an initiative that was started, I think, around 10 years ago by two women and Google because they were actually analyzing. So what is the issue there inside of technological companies? Why women especially are not growing very fast and not progressing in the career? So they were analyzing many, many things. Right. And then they were looking at the structure of the companies because, you know, like women are always somewhere in this kind of middle and it's very hard to break this glass ceiling. And they were thinking, okay, so what can we actually do about that? And um, they decided that they will choose a very specific competence that they're going to work with because they felt that um, there is lots of challenges and stereotypes related to it. And this was about self-promotion. And their kind of guess and their belief was that if women will start talking more about their achievements and self-promoting, so this will actually help them a lot to grow faster. So then... And uh, when they started working with these workshops, so they actually saw huge interest from other people because there are also other, like many other people who are coming from the underrepresented groups and they are facing similar challenges. Yes. Yeah? So then this workshop became more inclusive. And then what actually I see also and what normally people say when they come to this kind of workshop is that many of them, they suffer from this and they struggle with the low self-esteem and lack of self-confidence. And they feel that they are kind of, as you were saying, yes, like rubbish and self-promotion. So I think that whenever you are here, so this is the right place and then we can discuss many things. Um, of course, there are many things which are gendered, and then I will also highlight those things, but there are also things which are related to many of us because um, we are facing different types of exclusion in many ways, yes, and um, yeah, so um, of course there are lots of benefits of self-promotion, so and of course like 
uh, when we're not talking about ourselves, so it's very hard also to build the perception about the person. And of course, when we are self-promoting, so it's a bit easier to control and take control over how we are perceived by other people and then also make others understand. So what is our unique contribution? Yes, that we can make. Um, so the possibilities are great. Yes, in this sense. So um, the aim of this workshop, what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to talk nice things speak nice about ourselves yeah so we will be looking for reasons to talk about ourselves in a nice way and um, by the end of the workshop so i hope that all of us will become more sensitive to difficulties that people face when they self-promote and also will become more supportive to others uh, regardless of sex gender ethnicity and whatever else right so this is the key idea of this workshop and um, Maybe then, so then also, if you would like to research more, so you can also go and Google I'm Remarkable, and then you will, you can also join the pool of facilitators and you can get the access to all the materials, research, like research, and they have lots of opportunities. So maybe then let's uh, jump into the research. And uh, the first question before we go and discuss some of the findings, um, I want to ask you a question, and you can also type in Menti, but you can also simply speak up. Um, so do you ever find yourself wanting to talk about your achievements, but you hesitate, so you don't do it? Does it happen to you or not? You can also put plus or minus into the chat. And then if, if you hesitate and if you don't always talk about your achievements, so what is this that actually stops you? I think people don't listen. <laughs> Maybe you want to elaborate. <laughs> uh -huh, I don't want to look at, like I'm bragging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will do one thing. Um, I really want to have a bit more of conversation. So I will send you to breakout rooms once again so that you discuss a bit and you add more things here. Yes, yeah? so very shortly you will get to, you know, you will just talk to new people and then you will get back to us like in, in three minutes. Yep. Okay, opening the rooms and you can add more things on the board. Please enjoy. Okay, so um, I see that everyone's back, right? So maybe we could share a few things. Yes, yeah? so of course we can read, we can see something here that is on the board, but maybe you would like to, I don't know, was there any kind of hot topic that you want to share with us that you were discussing in the group? Something that maybe was similar or something very specific? What? Um, not a lot of time to do, but... Um, imposter syndrome was one, not having enough certificates, um, not being brave enough to say I am qualified or not having clarity. You do so many things like what do I want to tell people? Mm. Or some, being in an audience that doesn't really understand what a trainer or youth draw. What do you mean a trainer or youth? What is that? Um, but there were a couple of things that came up when you're laughing because it's familiar, right? <laughs> we had the same discussion here. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody understands what are we doing in life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, any other groups? I don't know if you want to also second. For, for us, it was the bragging part and um, um, not not wanting to sound cocky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else? That's uh yeah. In our group, uh, we have just uh, the last part, we were exploring actually how we are used to, um, how to say, share our uh, feelings, ourselves in this kind of environment like how we do now. But out there, there is not the same way like uh, this confidence or uh, it's maybe we are still looking for, for uh, how to say, the safe, uh, safe environment to share what, what we're feeling and we don't have it. Mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. kind of like this. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see many things here on the board which uh, they resonate a lot with um, many other things that people say when I run this type of workshops. 
And then normally what when I I'm asking people so what the, what they say like the rest are all categories. So first of all, being kind of scared that they will be judged by the audience when we are talking about our achievements, especially because it's not very clear or maybe because people say what are you doing that's very strange or I could do actually better and I'm much better in that. Um having less expertise for example on some of the questions. Um also probably like being afraid to be criticized. Um, people also say that they're a bit shy um, or they actually want others to guess and see what are their achievements, you know, so that we don't verbalize them, but people somehow know that we are, <laughs> we've actually achieved this, this and that. Um, people also say that they feel that achievements of other people seem to be more kind of impressive than our own. Um, ragging is always the, the thing where people don't promote themselves and don't, don't talk about this achievement. Um, and actually, yes, this is all um, can be characterized like in one term, which is a lot about the imposter syndrome. And they would go and like check what is the imposter syndrome. So um, it manifests in the following things. So we evaluate our achievements normally not good enough compared to other people. Um, we are afraid to share achievements because we feel we don't have enough expertise on a specific issue. And then what happens to us very often that we study a lot. So we go for another training, we take another master's, we do PhD. So we're actually learning and studying a lot and trying to improve, improve, improve. And then there is still no space where we are sharing these achievements. Um, and then also we sometimes try to explain things that happen to us and the achievements um, as if by coincidence or circumstances, you know, as if at the exam, kind of, I got the, the, the biggest, like the, the highest grade, but just because I was lucky, right? So, and then that's a very funny thing because um, many people, when they talk about achievements, they say, you know, and then somehow, somehow it happened that actually I was lucky and they got this, this and that thing. And um, in the workshops, I often have people who tell the story that they were making kind of toast, celebrating some, I don't know, like one year, like in some organization, they were saying, I'm so happy to be here. You're such nice colleagues. Uh, it was universe that gave me this kind of opportunity to work together with you. <laughs> and then, uh, colleagues were saying, listen, you were doing lots of things to get here, right? So you were actually... Um, doing many things so you were also applying for this job so you were also getting on board you were volunteering for a very long time and so on so please don't say that this is universe because actually these are your efforts yeah so this is um, what you did actually okay so um um, one thing that we know when we are talking about the self-promotion and one stereotype is that this is a lot about bragging. So this is how we were raised. And I think this is a very, very cultural thing because in many cases in our childhood, I don't know if you remember, but when people were like, or kids were talking about achievements, so very often parents would say, so listen, stop bragging. Yes. Yeah? So it's not nice. So, and then. Um, one thing is, if this is based on facts, what we are talking about, right, these achievements, so this is actually not bragging, yeah, so as long as it is about some facts, it's fine, right, so this is actually not it. Um, another thing is that, um, of course, if we would be living in a village, you know, <laughs> so everybody would know everything about us, about the accomplishments, and this, how it was actually constructed previously, because we were like living in small places and so on. And there were lots of gossips and people would know more because they had like stronger connections and this kind of horizontal ties. But now, unfortunately, accomplishments, they do not speak about themselves. So we need to have a bit more of um, communication. Um, and of course, this is a lot also kind of gender issue because in many cases, um, many people because of the background, yes, or women especially, they suffer much more uh, from the imposter syndrome than men, like based on different kind of research that we have. So, and uh, now if we want to get more opportunities, um, more promotions, I don't know, like being invited as a trainer, doing different kind of things. So we actually need to promote ourselves a bit more. So just being recommended, of course, that's a very good tool still because we get recommended by our colleagues and then we get lots of opportunities. But sometimes, I mean, in many cases, we still need to do additional promotion of ourselves. Um, 
What is important to understand about when we talk about the achievements is how we talk about them. And then there was a small study that we were making in one of the NGOs where I was working because we were looking at women activists who were uh, dealing with different kind of um, social problems in the villages, for example, um, and they were organizing communities to do something to mobilize people, you know, like to solve some kind of problems that they had. I don't know, something about water or maybe something about the road, you know, like making it more safe. And then we asked them um, at the end of the project to write uh, short success stories about how they actually managed to deal with local problems. So when we had women and men writing about how they actually dealt with it. It was very interesting to see that they were communicating the achievements in very different ways. How do you think women were talking about the achievements? What words were they using? Any guesses? I would say probably very much the we. We did this very much community-based and yeah, not an I statement, but a we. Yes, we, us, mm -hmm. yes, exactly, not using I language. Uh -huh. It was luck, yes, there. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, what else? It was kind of, I would say, passive language, you know, like when we say, so there was a problem and then we somehow organized and then we went and we talked to municipality and then somehow the problem was solved because of, some, you know, so it was like very, very modest, you know, like because of these modesty norms, because women normally don't sh shout out about themselves. Um, how do you think men were communicating about, and when I say men also, I mean, um, I know that we have sensitive audience, so it's not all men. <laughs> and this is, of course, like the, um, the very specific study of men in villages of Belarus. Yes. So how do you think men from the villages of Belarus were talking about the achievements? What wording, what language they were using? There is no problem. <laughs> <laughs> there is no problem. Yes, they were like very much, you know, using this kind of active language, you know, like I did it. I saw the problem. I recognized, I organized people. I went, I had negotiations and then I solved the problem. Yes. So that was very interesting because especially because we knew what was actually happening in, in reality. And we saw that women were much more efficient in our case, right, in solving different kind of things. So uh, when we're talking about the achievements, so we also need to see also how people talk about them. And uh, people from underrepresented groups, they normally use this kind of community thing. So we as, you know, like, and it becomes a bit more passive also uh, because they want to demonstrate that they are together with other people, which is very nice and which is like, I appreciate a lot, but then at some moment, I also lose the track. Okay, so who was it? So who was actually there, you know, like mobilizing and doing all these things? So I think that's also very important to remember. Um, another thing, what we know from the research um, that was done is that if we actually don't promote ourselves, so our peers who are self-promoting, they'll be always more efficient than us. Right, so they will be always kind of more bright. There will be this kind of north star that everybody will be uh, looking at, and so on. So if we actually don't self-promote, so we will get less opportunities. So this is also something that we know from the research and from science. And um, then if we're talking about the self-promotion, so of course we'll not become like very very confident in one workshop, because. Uh, this is a skill. So this is kind of a muscle, right? So it's like the same with, like with running. So when we start running, we are just running a bit and we get tired very often. But then if we practice every day, so we become better and better, right? So very often when people self-promote, they have lots of blocks, you know, like, and then, for example, when they start, maybe it doesn't ha happen to us very often because we're trainers. So we're used to work with audience. Um, but very often when people start talking about the achievements, um, they change a lot. So they become red, you know, or they talk a bit lower with lower voice, you know, so they, they don't feel very uh, confident when they're doing this, right? So, and, so when we do it very often, so then we become kind of 
much more confident and we're at ease with those things. Um, there is also one more thing from the research that we know, and this is a lot about modesty norms, um, that women and men, they all don't like women who promote themselves. <laughs> so I also heard here that you were saying that, yes, and also when, when I promote myself as a, as a man, also I get this kind of comments, but especially when um, there are people from like women or people from underrepresented groups, when they're talking about their achievements and when they're promoting themselves, um, people really hate it. Yes. Why do you think it happens? Um, I don't know how much uh, this example will resonate with the rest of the group, but there is this Beyonce song. Uh, and at the beginning, uh, there's this poem about uh, being a woman, but not a lot, uh, so that to not scare people. I feel like it's a, that uh, kind of a situation where we accept, expect some certain roles to be fulfilled but not too much so that the, the people around them are not scared or overwhelmed by the power the person brings. Yes, exactly. I mean, <laughs> did you make this research? <laughs> so uh, exactly, because we have very, very um, clear expectations about people and uh, like their position and the roles they're playing. So like, of course, for women, it's being more kind of conforming, right? Um, and also we have lots of stereotypes and biases about other uh, people, like other underrepresented groups. So what happens, for example, when people suddenly start self-promoting, um, there is the effect which is called backlash effect. So these are the social and economic sanctions that people imply, you know, like, so they actually use them to exclude a person who is self-promoting because they don't like it. They think it's too much. So, for example, many times what happens is that sometimes when you need to recommend a person, you are not actually recommending a person who is self-promoting. Yes, because you think she already has lots of opportunities, right? Or he or they. And then um, these are the economic kind of sanctions. And then sometimes even people stop um, communicating with self-promoting peers because they feel kind of, I don't know, they feel tense, yeah. So they they feel there is some sort of tension. They feel that um, they don't like the way they are communicating and so on. And this is all related a lot to the self promotion stereotypes and biases around the self promotion, yes, which is very much cultural stuff that we've learned um, through life. Um, another thing here is that. Of course, like, and I think that this fact probably, you know, from many other research, um, it was quite popular, you know, like, and it was also everywhere on media that actually people have different strategies to self-promote and apply for the jobs. And then I was discussing it a lot with my uh, peers, uh, colleagues with the female trainers. And that was very interesting because they were like, ah, actually, why, why do I do it? <laughs> yeah, so, um, from the research, we know that in many cases, for example, men, they normally apply for promotion when they meet at least like 60% of the job requirements. And women apply only when they feel that they meet 100% of the job requirements. Um, what do you think? So what are the consequences for women then? Less opportunities. Mm -hmm. Less opportunities. Yeah. But also women don't grow because they always apply for the jobs where they're already perfect. So there are no kind of, there is no stretch, right? So there is no challenge. And uh, this is how we end up, for example, in, in many cases, applying for the job where I feel, okay, I'm secure here. My expertise is brilliant, so I'll be doing the same thing that I was doing 10 years ago already, right? So um, um, in these terms, um, when we are discussing the strategies with uh, female colleagues, so they say, actually, yes, I need to take more risks. And they start applying for many jobs, even if they feel that it's not 100%, but then there are some requirements which are critical, but there are also some requirements which are not critical, and then you still can get this job and this offer. Mm -hmm. 
I think <clears throat> Shuja also just mentioned that, that there is a huge also competition between women uh, in, in the job. That's quite uh, um, very obvious also in, in, in the work that I was doing mm -hmm. in, in Turkey, for example, and when I was working with larger teams and the, the women among them, they really have, I would, I don't want to say they hated each other, but uh, the, the problem was really that they were really looking for being 100% and uh, and uh, struggling a lot also psychologically in that sense in order not to 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 make any mistake and to 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 stay at the level as as they are while yeah. the guys they they were more cool relaxed. they were much more <laughs> relaxed and easier and um, in in Turkey especially I really recognize as a, a, a observed that very very heavily Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I mean, um, people from underrepresented groups, they need to be perfect, right? So very often, we need to be also perfect in the profession, we need to be also perfect in the, in at home, you know, like doing all the household things. So it'd be good mothers, good professionals, you know, like, perfect everywhere. So there is, of course, lots of pressure. And there is lots of competition um, among women, for example, women are very often blocking other women. This is also what we know. Um, yes, please, Sean. I, I just wanted to add that in my experience, people often put way too many things in the essential column. I've often challenged people, why do you think we need four years experience? Two years, good experience is equally as good. Four years could be terrible experience. So, I mean, sometimes it says essential, but it's really not essential if you can show in other ways. Yes, yes, exactly. But knowing this fact, uh, I think that it also encourages a lot people who are normally a bit hesitant, if I should apply for this job or not, um, actually go and apply, take the risk. Yes, because otherwise you will never get this offer, you will ne never get this job. Um, so one more thing, and I think this is the last fact from the research that I'm going to share with you, because there are many of them, but probably this is uh, also the one which is relevant. So, of course, the race, ethnicity, um, gender, ability, uh, all the stereotypes, they impact the perception about how competent are the people with whom we are interacting. So, for example, I'm working a lot with this IT company, and then we're international, so we're a huge corporation, and then... We have colleagues uh, who are coming from India, and uh, they have they have perfect English language, yes, but they have quite strong accent, and then they are very often perceived as less competent than other people just because of the accent, yes. So there are many things which impact this uh, perception, and of course, like lots of biases, and it's very also we have lots of gray zones and. Um, that's very hard also to get rid of these biases and be always critical about our perceptions and so on. But of course, these things, they influence a lot. Also, if you're coming from kind of third country or if you're coming from a new country and so on. So, of course, there is very kind of clear division. So maybe before we go to the practice part, so I would ask you um, if this data, if this research resonates with you and if there are any stories that you want to share um that second what is mentioned here or also if you want to confront some of the statements with regard to the last statement race and gender stereotypes i have the feeling that in my field of work it's especially when it comes to the international context this is not so much present as it is probably at national level when you have a job somewhere in mm. the in the city or something like that. So I personally, I feel very comfortable with that, to be honest, just to, to give a short mm. example. I have several times tried to find a job somewhere in the, in the country where I'm living and uh, it was impossible because of all, I do not know exactly why, but, um, but I have so much my doubts or that's my thinking here in this respect um while i never faced any problems when it comes to the international context mm -hmm. neither on gender nor on race to be honest mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes anyone else 
Uh, I don't know. For this statement, I'm, I'm not, uh, I partially agree. Um, I, I'm, yes, it's true that in our environment we are more attend. Uh, I'm how to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More uh, try to be more uh, uh, aware of this uh, stereotype and prejudice that we have it. Uh, but I think uh, it became more hidden because um, I don't think that like we can really um, avoid them. We can be we became uh, aware, but uh, but it's it's I wouldn't say that it's impossible, but it's very hard to to take out, especially the uh, how is called the cognitive bias. Yes. Yeah, cognitive bias. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, don't hear any female voices somehow. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to add, I, I have uh, many, many examples of, uh, for example, presenting our work to authorities, organizing press media, and I'm always seen as the secretary of the president and not the one who is coordinating <laughs> and organizing everything, you know, so... Yes, I, I leave it like quite quite often here at the local level at least. I agree that on the international level it's 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 different, at mm -hmm. least from my experience. Mm. Yeah, different but still. But even me, you know, like when I read about this uh, study that both men and women they hate hate self promoting women, I was like, ah, oh, that's why I actually I'm so irritated when some uh, when my colleagues are you know like talking about the achievements. So, and then, I mean, it was long ago, but I realized that I was sometimes even blocking them, you know, like I was not really like promoting my women colleagues. So that was like quite shameful, you know, like when I think about it now, but it happens to many, many people. Yes. And it's not very um, kind of mindful uh, how it all works. Right. So this is a lot like this kind of unconscious bias that just pop up and you just react and you just behave in that way. But then now I analyze a bit more. Yeah, so I think, okay, is it this kind of gender stereotype I have? Is it this kind of backlash that is now appearing or is it something different? So I think it's also good for self-analysis. Um, um, yep. There is one uh, one thing that uh, I was thinking right now. And I think this is happened sometimes to me that when I, I, okay, let's say that I don't promote to myself, but then somebody else promote uh, in him or herself and then I start to compare and I said mm. okay so this person has a more uh, play to speak uh, herself or himself but I did better things than than this person <laughs> and then I'm probably like like you maybe I should say you know, you didn't tell <laughs> and I didn't say that <laughs> Yes. I don't know if it's happened to somebody else, but like I could say this, I could say. But then, and then actually, this stopped me more because then I said it's too late to me to say this because then it seems that I'm competing with this person, so I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to be the first, yes, to yes, <laughs> on people. Okay. It's a very British thing to be annoyed and cross with somebody promoting themselves, and to think that you could do better, but not do anything about it. Just, just be annoyed. Yeah, annoyed and gossiping, you know, yeah. and blocking people and so on. So, yeah. So this is how it works, yes. And then when we know about the social mechanisms and how they're constructed, so we can actually also give feedback to colleagues, we can be more mindful about ourselves and so on. So let's make a short exercise. So what I'll be asking you to do, and then, of course, it's voluntary, so you don't have to do it, but I think that's good practice, you know, like also to see how it works. First, we're going to have individual exercise. So I will ask you now, so I will set the timer for like five minutes. And I will ask you to write. And uh, I mean, this I'm remarkable thing. Um, it might be also a bit annoying for people. Like I'm remarkable, like very strange word. So when we're talking about that, <laughs> yes, we are, we are normally saying, okay, so you can choose the word, how you actually talk about yourself when you're proud of yourself. So very often I would say like, uh, I'm cool or I'm like, I'm amazing because of this, this and that. Or I'm like, I'm very strong in this, this and that. So I'm remarkable is just kind of, you know, like a word, but I like this remarkable. So if you like it as well, so you can use it. But very often I describe myself in other words. Yeah, so you can choose like, how would you like to talk about yourself? And then what I will ask you to do 
is to um, take, I don't know, like paper, like pen, or also you can do it online, but better with paper, and write as many statements uh, about your achievements as you can create at the moment, right? So what you will be doing, you will be just, you start writing and you start with, I'm cool, I'm great, I'm remarkable, I'm strong. And then you start writing your achievements. So your achievements are not just qualities. Yes, you can also think about achievements um, in personal and professional life. Yes, because as trainers, very often we do lots of personal development work and so on. And then also somehow this personal professional is very related. So try to think about personal, professional achievements and write them down. No censorship. Please write everything that comes into your mind. Even if you think that this is something very, very minor, that's absolutely fine. Um, because, I mean, you don't need to think about the research that you've done 10 years ago, right? I mean, of course, it was very remarkable, but maybe it's something small that you are doing every day, and this is very, very remarkable. So this is very, very important. What people normally share, sometimes, you know, like in these workshops, um, women say, you know, I went to the forest to look for mushrooms, and I got lost. And... I was very, you know, like I was panicking, but then I managed to come down. I was reflecting. I thought, okay, so I was actually coming from this part. And then I managed to find my way out from the forest. So, I mean, <laughs> this can be also this kind of example. So you don't need to think about something super professional, but of course, like both professional, personal things are welcome. So um, let me set the timer. I have, please, question. Okay. Mm -hmm. um... I, I would like you to give me a bit more focus on what you want me to write down, because uh, you gave so many examples. Now I I'm unsure about what to think about. Or do you just want freestyle? Freestyle. I want freestyle. No okay. censorship. We're not going to ask you to read it all out. So it's only yours. Uh, so you can write anything you want. Yes. But try okay. to think about personal achievements and professional. As okay. many as you can. Don't stop writing. You can turn off the camera if you feel more comfortable.
can see if you are writing, but please don't stop. No censorship. Okay, time is up. So please uh, stop for the moment. And uh, I want to ask you a few things. So um, first of all, I want to ask you, so um, how many statements do you have all in all? And uh, if you could look at them and calculate how many belong to personal sphere and how many to professional? Or just approximately like five, five, or like two, seven, two, three. Here, half and half. Half and half. And how many you have in total? Six. Six. Uh huh. Okay. Yep. Others? You can also write in the chat if you want. Ten to seven. Uh huh. Perfect. All of them professionally. Runa, <laughs> half and half. Okay, 20, 11 professional, nine personal, 50 50, 14 total. Oh. Mine uh, ah. kind of could say half and half, but some could be professional and personal. So, Both, yeah, mm -hmm. that happens very often to us people who are working with like youth work or activism. So, because it's like very much interlinked. So, I think that's very normal. Okay, so I see, yes, that like one personal, five professional for Ines, I think I see, uh-huh. All of them personal for Thea. <laughs> okay, <laughs> 10, uh-huh, so Bruno had 10, yes, all together, good. Um, how did you feel when writing those statements? Some of them I feel that I exaggerate. <laughs> am, I, am I exaggerating those things or what is true? Okay, yes. A bit of self censorship. <laughs> yeah, quite unqualifying. So it's like, yeah, I'm good, but not always. <laughs> A bit of evaluation, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> okay. Well, I may have misunderstood the, 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 the activity, it's possible. So I started with with my personal, let's say, things that I think are ex very specific in for me, and then I I I wrote down my achievements, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I find a big relation between them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anyone else? How was it for others? Um, I can share for me it was a nice reminder because I think on the day to day I quite easily focus just on the things that aren't working or the more negative or what I haven't achieved yet. 
So it's nice to have a moment to check in and recognize, okay, so I'm actually doing more than I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. For me, it was not hard because I like to encourage other people to talk about their positive things. So I tried to do it myself. In fact, I got so excited, I spilled my coffee. So obviously I was enjoying it. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, was it challenging for others? I don't know. And if yes, what was challenging? For me, it was challenging the fact that I was writing things down, but they, they, they felt a bit general, to be honest. So I was writing things about my professional life, but they were not specific on things that I have achieved or it's mm. general feelings that I get from myself and from the feedback that I receive from others. So it wasn't so so specific yeah mm -hmm. i see okay so um let's do something so let's do a bit of group practice and what i will ask you to do now is uh, those who want if you could choose one statement that you want to share with us maybe personal maybe professional and then Say it, yes. Yeah? So you can also raise your hand so that we know that you're going to speak. So you're, it's your turn. And then you just start like saying, okay, so I'm cool or like uh, I'm remarkable because of this, this, this. Yes, and then you go. So um, others, we listen, we support. I know with face, I don't know emojis, um, any other ways also can be like clapping or something. Um, so that people don't feel awkward. And then when we do it, so let's have a short debrief. I don't know if anyone wants to start. I can start, I don't know, just to give an example. So I'm remarkable because um, I have this ability to stand for people when they are bullied. And the last example that I had is like, my colleague was really bullied and trolled for um, nominating for like very important position. And then I was very, very angry. And so I made lots of comments and posts and uh, I talked to many people about how I feel. And I feel that it is not fair when she wants to get a good promotion, but then other people, they, simply don't like what she's doing so and i really i showed my attitude and i feel that i'm a good friend and i'm a good colleague for my person i mean for for this girl you can you can support me <laughs> okay anyone else okay <clears throat> I'm remarkable because I trust in people and I really have a big trust in teams and in people with whom I'm working. And I think this gives me a sort of a big achievement in anything what I'm doing in in, in regard to the projects which I'm engaged in. Because that, that keeps me calm and uh, focused. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I feel it when working with you. Okay, I can go. I am remarkable because I uh, I am very empathetic and I try to treat everybody equally. And I try to um, make conscient all my unconscious bias all the time and I rewind myself like continuously. I could sense that even just in the short breakout room. So thank you. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Who wants to be next? I can be next. Um, I am remarkable because I have managed to organize balance between my work and family life. It works for me, not for everybody, but I. it works for me and I'm not changing it for anybody. <laughs> You need to share with us more information about that. <laughs> yeah, you, you need to learn to say no. 
Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I just want you to know that I can talk at any point if you need someone to fill. So that's all. I'm I'm really good at filling dead air time. There you go. There's my... <laughs> Don't take it as pressure. But yeah, but just if you feel you want to share something with us, some some of your achievements, just do it. I, I mean, I don't I don't need any encouragement. Just saying. <laughs> just say I'll, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you one. Um, I can make. I feel very proud that I can make almost anyone laugh, even when they're feeling sad. So, okay, <laughs> we need to test it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I can go. Um, I am remarkable. <laughs> because. <laughs> Because you are, I am, I am remarkable. I am amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can I? Sure. Go. Um, I am remarkable because people trust me so easy. Mm -hmm. That's very good quality. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What else? I don't know. I don't want to push anyone, mm. but. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Jusha, maybe. Yes. Jusha, that Bruno. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I am remarkable because despite the social trend that uh, you are addicted uh, and you know that they are mentally uh, bad and they are addicted to digital tools, I am still uh, enthusiastic regarding you. And. Um, I am still uh, optimistic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bruno, you were the next. Uh, I don't know which uh, which statement to choose, but uh, let's go with the more obvious for me. I'm remarkable because I create uh, an educational tool slash game uh, from the scratch without knowing exactly what I was doing. <laughs> Kind of, <laughs> I know what I was doing, but uh, I discovered later that I didn't know enough. But I made it well. At the end. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now you need to share with us the link <laughs> to self promote a bit more. <laughs> I think some of the best discoveries happen when you don't know, when you find out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Looking at others, I don't know if... Yeah, I can, I can go and share one. I am remarkable because at my age, I have achieved things that I never even thought of before. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I can go next. I am cool because um, I'm very... I'm. I'm holding a lot of first time in the family titles. Mm. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to know more. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I can go. Uh, I am remarkable. I don't know if this fits, but uh, similar to what Trisha said, uh, I'm saying no more. Uh, because before I just I get excited about many things so I'll just say yes to everything and it was not supporting me so now even though it's difficult I choose okay I'm gonna pick a focus and just say yes to the things that support me uh, right now mm -hmm. that's great mm -hmm. sounds really great mm -hmm. okay were we all I know, Rodolfo, I don't remember if you were saying, but I don't know if you want to speak. Oh, I would say I am remarkable because I'm an active listener. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, I think, I don't know, anyone else? We can start wrapping up. Um. So... 
the question I want to ask is, um, how did it feel like to speak up? And how did it feel like to listen to other people? I love listening to other people talking positively about themselves and I actively encourage it whenever I can. So it was really nice. Mm -hmm. sharing. And how was it to talk about yourself? I mean, easy, but, but then I'm a, I don't just do training. I do lots of performance stuff. So I'm, I'm yeah, so you're very used good. to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about others? Yeah, I thought it was lovely. I thought it was very empowering to actually say it out loud. And uh, I don't know, something is just very special about listening to others and kind of being celebrating with others, you know, their achievements. Just a very nice feeling. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely easier to listen to others than to say it myself, but uh, also empowering. Yes, yeah, same with Ines. Uh, it feels very nice listening to other people talking about themselves it, because it feels like they believe in themselves and it sounds uh, uh, real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like sharing it for myself and saying it out loud felt very vulnerable. I was hesitant at first. That's why I took my time a bit. Uh, but hearing other people, it really felt like there was some sparks of community to, uh, after all of us shared something about ourselves that we deep, feel deeply proud of. Mm -hmm. Yes. It feels uh, very often what people say. It resonates a lot with what you were saying, that they feel very vulnerable and not secure when they're talking about their own achievements. But then when they listen to others, so they get more confident. And so this kind of atmosphere helps also to speak up. But then this is also for us to remember. So when we are actually talking about the achievements, yes, other people actually enjoy it. They actually like it. Like many times, especially if it's like not online, <laughs> but in this kind of settings in the groups. Um, so normally people are quite happy to listen about that. Yes. And they say, oh, that was very inspirational. I actually enjoyed it a lot. So um, I think that whenever you feel that you are a bit scared or vulnerable to talk about that, so you can also like stick to this moment when you are listening to others, right? So it helps a lot. Um, what could be some of the practices um, before like we finalize? So um, very often, as I was saying, so you could be a bit more consistent, yes? Also, I mean, I understand that this might be personal experience, but you can also multiply it. You can scale it to your groups with whom you're working. And then if you feel that people in your group, in your community, they need a bit of self-promotion. So you can also share with them this idea and you can organize some like remarkable Wednesdays or basically some day or some moment when you get together with your colleagues and you or like friends and you share some of the achievements. Yes. So and then you make the circle. Um, what also we recommend as a practice very often is to choose some of the achievements and try to bring them as much as possible in different contexts and then see how it works out. Yes. Especially because you were saying that it's not very clear how to talk about my profession, how to talk about youth training and youth work. So maybe you could also try to focus on that and see how to present it in different contexts and see how people would react. Yes. And then find this kind of proper way how to talk about the achievements in this sphere. Another thing is tracking the achievements, because very often what happens is when we need to talk about the achievements, it's kind of blank page, no ideas at all, as if, you know, as if we didn't do anything. And then what helps when you're preparing for some interviews or when you are preparing for some partners, meetings or somewhere where you need to negotiate and when you need also to talk about yourself, your organization, I know things that you are doing. So to have things written somewhere. And then you just open the log and then you just track and you see, okay, so maybe this could give me, I mean, I could use this. Or maybe uh, you look at the achievements and then something sparkles in your mind and oh, actually I can talk about that, right? So that's very helpful sometimes to track these things. Um, of course, also we suggest you choose the stretch goals. 
and then to set some stretch goals and think, okay, so where would I like to self-promote and in which sphere I would like to get the offers and more opportunities and also try to go and talk to people and self-promote there in this area. Or as you were saying, for example, you don't feel confident self-promoting online, but you will never feel so confident if you are not promoting. So then, because you, you will never be perfect, right? So then maybe you start today and you're not so perfect as you think, but then other people will actually enjoy it and they will have no doubts that you are professional and they will be quite happy about seeing your accomplishments online. So that could be also one of the ideas and of course, if you also have some role models, you actually have some people around you and you like how they talk about their achievements. So you can also copy a bit the way they do it, right? So you could also look for your style, but you could also kind of copy and incorporate some of the things, how they do things, how they talk about achievements so that it's not so stressful. Yes, before you find your own way, how you do that. And um, that would be also good learning in a way. Okay, so before we close the um, webinar, webinar workshop, so maybe we could do a very short evaluation as we always do, small reflection before you say goodbye. So how do you feel now? So if you could leave uh, one word in Menti so that we see how are people, what is the mood? Mm -hmm. While this is happening, Marisa, I wanted to ask you, what, how how else can we use this I am remarkable? Which other word can we use instead of remarkable? I'm, I don't know. Let's, let's brainstorm. Like I am proud or I am I know, I'm great. I'm, I'm strong, like, or... Okay, okay, okay. Native speakers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just some words to add. <laughs> I, was I, also am thinking I am about wonderful this, because I am wonderful. Amazing. I am wonderful because mm -hmm. I am happy because mm -hmm. remarkable is the good word though. Mm, it actually is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I see people have relief, <laughs> at ease, aware, empowered, inspired, curious, motivated. Okay, we also had um some learning objectives. So I want to check if, uh, how do you feel about self-promotion? Uh, how do you feel about supporting colleagues? Uh, or maybe your young people, yes, for example, it could be as well. And how motivated you are to discover a bit more about the topic and the biases around self-promotion. Mm -hmm. Gumption is a great word. Gumption. Yeah. So I'm, I'm ga ga. Oh no, how do I say? Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a noun. It's, I'm full of gumption. Ah, I'm full of gumption. Okay. But it's really old fashioned, but great old fashioned word. <laughs> so when we really want to show off, we use this word. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because most people wouldn't know it, even <laughs> even English people. <laughs> So that they get. I, I didn't put gumption, but I'm very happy someone did. <laughs> when I oh. hear the word gumption, I just go oomph. <laughs> it's like yeah. oomph, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chutzpah yeah. is a is a, another word to describe it. Okay, okay, perfect. So thanks a lot. That was very short and very intense. And um, I don't know, Nick. Vitali, if you want to yep. say anything. Yeah, before. I just need to um, to close up. Can we go back to uh, full screen with everybody? Sure. Can I just share one achievement before we go? I'm really very good at quizzes, and this is the proof. It's a pointless trophy from a TV <laughs> show. But anyway, moving on. It was Thank just there. Sure. I didn't go out of my way to find it. It was, it was right next to me. So... <laughs> It was right next so, to me because I always keep it with me. That was like okay. So now, now self promotion party starts <laughs> after party yes. after, after webinar. <laughs> so, um, really big thank you, Marisha, for uh, sharing all all of your knowledge and the information there. Uh, much much appreciated and, and really really interesting. So, uh, really thank you 
and um, virtual applause and real applause. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Vitali, for support. Thank you, Marisha, again. Um, ciao. Adio. Oh, ciao, ciao.